think it's getting there. Just thinking about it. Possibly, maybe, perhaps, perchance. Are we live? Are we getting there? Kinda? Thinking about it? Says on air. Let's do this. All right. So it looks like I am up and going here. Hopefully we can, uh, yeah, we'll wait a few minutes to get some people in here. What's better for heavy oil physics or supersonic? Both. Supersonic is earlier and smoother. Physics is longer and stronger, but uh, they'll both be pretty daggone good. So uh, the fifth or the supersonic will be good for everybody, but me that is. So, that's a thing. What if you feel? What if few people filter in. I got a few things to talk about, but mainly we're just going to talk about the balls. So astrophysics, IQ Tour Emerald. That's what we're going to talk about. So, oh yes, we are going to talk about the practice jerseys. So, yes. And let's see. So everybody won't be able to watch it live, but be able to be sure to tune into the YouTube video when it's posted. Yep. Uh, great feedback for the two gems. Yeah, these are these are pretty good. So that kind of awesome. uh, Yeah, the practice jerseys look awesome. I'm going to put those up on the screen here in a minute. Of the two releases, which one is your favorite? So far, it's the Astrophysics. Just because it gives me a little bit more down lane, I haven't actually been able to use the. I haven't thrown the IQ on a house shot yet, though. So. Uh, I didn't do any house shot filming whatsoever for either of these videos. I just took them out through one of the sports shots and then uh, following, uh, following Monday, so just uh, this Monday, we had a tournament in Kansas City that was also on Turnpike. And so I've only thrown them. I think the IQ is going to look a lot better on a house shot. Um, it was just a little bit over under from straight and as soon as I got deep there just wasn't quite enough punch on the back end but that's not really a that's not really an IQ tour you don't think about when you're using an IQ tour of any form you don't think okay well let's get deep and swing it that's not really the thing the astrophysics gave me a better punch on the back end so I think once I get the IQ on some other stuff it's going to be heckin awesome so have a Halo intensifier and a high road expert the astrophysics fit. It actually fits under the intensifier. The intensifier is uh, earlier and quicker, believe it or not. It's really, really sharp for when the when the intensifier winds up and starts going, it goes. The astrophysics gives me a little bit more length. It gives me, um, and I do have actually the intensifier and the astrophysics are within like an eighth of an inch pin placement. So. Um, so yeah, it'll fit right under the intense fire. You still got a lot of, you still got a, a big gap between the high road X and the astrophysics, but that's where the IQ to a pearl might fit. That's I was talking to, uh, probably about a month or two ago. I was talking to Chad McClain, and because of because of what the line, I always people ask me what kind of my wish list stuff is, and I don't really look for wish list stuff. I just look for uh, closed holes. Or, or holes in the in the lineup. Where would where would something where do we need something? Where could something fit? And the difference between what was shiny in the Thunder line and what was shiny in the Master line was huge. I mean, you're talking about going from a High Road X. Actually, I think the High Road for me is a little bit stronger than the High Road X. So you're going from a High Road all the way up to a Sonic, and that's just a absolute chasm for me, which was kind of filled nicely by the Idle Pearl. I think the Idle Pearls, uh, there's still a gap between that and the that and the high road, but, and so I, so the IQ Tour Emerald actually fits pretty good there. And then the other thing that we were, that I was looking at was, well, we discontinued the intents, obviously we're getting something Pearl. I'm hoping for a Pearl Physics, and so that's exactly what I told him. I said, if you have if we have a shiny C3, which is the C3 core is what's in the in the IQ, it didn't necessarily didn't necessarily have to be an IQ, but you know with that core it's probably going to be one. So hybrid hybrid or hybrid or pearl, we need a shiny IQ style release of an astroline. 
and with the loss of both the code black, which has been discontinued for a while, and the intents getting discontinued, uh, we need a we need a pearl there, and um, actually. The the by the R two S Pearl thought had entered my mind on one of those cores, but thinking physics, I'm like, I hope it's in R G Pearl. But I also had R two S Pearl kind of in my mind too. So a Pearl, a Pearl of some sort in the master line or the, the premier line rather. But the astrophysics made the most sense all the way across the board because these both these releases check so many different boxes all at the same time that uh, Chad really put in a lot of work on these and. It, shows so da, 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 all right have a matchup song with the light 2000 codex 2000 exists that I want to retire I need a replacement for it yeah we're talking about that uh, the, the crux prime is going to be the closest to the exist just based on the shape the, the exist is pretty smooth um, the phase two might be in the conversation but it's a little bit it, it's just longer and stronger and it's just not quite the exist. The Prox Prime is, is a lot closer to the exist. So, yeah, catch the, I actually did, Max, what James said, I did compare the intense fire in the astrophysics video, and it is, it is, a, I don't know, necessarily want to say it's quicker on friction, it just, it takes less friction to get it going. It's ready to go, and as soon as it sniffs, even, as soon as it even just gets into the buff at the end of the lane, it's digging and going. So. Mm. Yeah, never fear Luke's e-secretary is here. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, James Kniffen. So, yeah, the, the Tour Emerald is like the gold, and what I said in the video is that, uh, and I actually had, if you go and watch my preview last week, I did, I did a live stream last week previewing both of these, but I had uh, Chad McLean, who's Storm's technical director, who designs all this stuff, come on and talk for about 15, 20 minutes, and then Justin Wyman, uh, most of you might know him as Justin Wee, he was uh, he was the Motive video producer for, for the last decade or so, but now he's Storm's technical developer, so he's, uh, he's working with Chad on some of this stuff too, just from a little different angle. Uh, but he, he did a comparison of the IQ Tour Pearl and the IQ, uh, yeah, the IQ Tour Pearl and the IQ Emerald, and he's got them on top of each other. If you want to get super stupidly nitpicky, the Emerald is just a hair bit sharper down the Just a hair bit. And it takes really, really good eyes to pick up on that and somebody that averages 230 to be able to tell the difference there. So if you had an IQ Tour Pearl and you liked it, the Emerald is the closest one. Uh, IQ 30, the the Teal 30, the the Buffa, or the Buffa Special Edition, uh, overseas releases, whatever else. This is the closest one out of all the remakes that have been done to the original IQ Tour Pearl. So. Best light oil ball that isn't urethane. You need to take a look at the um, the new tropical surges because what they did is they altered that core a little bit. It's basically the the core numbers are pretty well the numbers from like the ride and the joyride. And so if you get, I thought that the ride was like the best light oil ball, true light oil ball of of all time. Period, which had reactor hybrid on it and it had that. 257-ish 021 core, so 257 RG 021 differential. The tropical surges, different from the tropical storms. The tropical storms were like 258 or 259 and 009 on the differential, so basically an entry level ball. There's no kind of performance that you can really get out of that. There's just not enough there. But what they did with the tropical surges is they made them more into light oil performance balls. And so uh, the hybrid tropical surge would probably be the answer um, for that as far as as far as that. So let's scroll back up here. Uh, yeah, astrophysics took more than Halo Pearl 
yet really, really, really close in in total hook potential. I think that the Halo Pearl might have it by just a board or two because that E-Trax cover is a little bit stronger. Um, I do have my astrophysics drilled just a little bit strong, but we're talking again like an eighth a quarter of, a, of an inch on the pin. So not really, not really anything there. So um, the astrophysics is just a little different shape-wise from the Halo Pearl. I'm not going to say that they're necessarily not that they're not necessarily similar. It's just the the the, back, the the break point on the Halo Pearl is a little bit more defined and it's a little bit earlier. The astrophysics, um, because of how clean the R2S cover is, and it's also it's also only a medium strength cover, so the cover is going to play into this. The R2S Pearl is the most responsive cover that Storm has, but it has to see friction. It has to see into the pattern, no oil there, friction for it to do something. The e tracks cover, just like R3S Hybrid on the Intense Fire, it starts reacting in lower amounts of oil. So, whereas R2S will get just some traction in the buff, it's got to see hardcore friction before it starts to do much of anything. e tracks digs through a little bit more, so you're going to see more definition at the break point. Not necessarily a sharp move, just more definition from when it stops going one direction to going the other other direction. It's got a really short hook phase. Compared to the Idle Pearl, I think we're asking about the astrophysics. The Idle Pearl and the astrophysics are different animals, just because the Idle Pearl is virtually the Marble Pearl, and with the torque of an asymmetric core, especially the atomic core, in physics, in both physics releases, it gives me a lot of torque down at the down at the end of the lane. So there's a lot of there's a lot of booming. There's a lot of big booming. Uh, I'm here. I'm going type reaction for for this core, and that just doesn't happen with the IQ Tour Pearl. It's clean, and uh, because it's got the same cover, it's got that E-Trax e Pearl on it. Uh, the idle pearl is going to have a defined move down lane, but it's just it's going to be it's a lot rounder than the astrophysics is. So it'd be a, it'd be a great step down, actually. Waynesboro, Virginia. Let's see what's going on here. Hello. Does this happen to be? Hang on, let me get you to the speaker here. Does this happen to be Nick Brown? Yes, it is. What's uh, up? What's up? So, everybody, we have a special guest calling in. This is Nick Brown, who runs the SRGBBFS Facebook group, or Storm Rotor Grip Bowling Balls for Sale. We have over 13,000 members. We've got to be getting close to 14,000 by now, but he's the guy behind the group. And this is actually the first time that we've talked. Like a lot of other people, I send a lot of messages and and all kinds of stuff like that. But this is the first time that I've ever actually talked to you. So uh, welcome to the stream. Well, thank you very much. Um, we actually are over fourteen thousand, okay. uh, approaching fifteen thousand actually. No, well, total. So, so. so yeah, so uh, yeah, growing Good quickly. Deal. Yeah, uh, we'll be. Tell everybody that's watching. Um, we'll have a, a giveaway going on for 14,000 members here soon, and then after that, we'll have the 15,000 once we hit that. So, no, I mean, always continue to give. Love giving back. The sport has given me so much. Oh yeah. All right. So um, let's see. We we can talk a little bit about some stuff. You are actually a member of Team Fish. You are the Goldfish. So uh, why, yeah. Why don't you tell everybody how that happened? Uh, well, I mean, I've known Kyle since, well, let's see, uh, Kyle is my age, so, let's see, I've known Kyle for about nine years now. Uh, on and off, we've, I mean, I've seen him at regionals here and there, um, and then when I heard about Team Fish, I was like, I gotta, I gotta really, I gotta get into this, so, um, hang on one second, I gotta turn this down, I hear an echo from the, from the TV. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, Connor Pickford um, and the Guppy Troop and all those guys, we've seen at regions all the time, and 
I'm like, I need to see if I could join this thing. I'm not a national guy, I guess you could say. I'm just uh, a member of it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's that's really, I got my name out there because I was a big supporter of that and that kind of thing. And kind of started the group, and here I am. Yeah, and that's kind of it's kind of the way it starts is you just, you have an idea and you go for it and you don't really know, you don't really know where it's going to end up and all of a sudden you've spent several thousand dollars on a lot of different things and all of a sudden you've got a, I mean, that, your Facebook group is huge. I mean, when we're, we're talking about 15,000 members, that's a lot of people and there's all kinds of stuff you do. You do drawings on there, you do some giveaways, uh, you have merchandise, we have a, a, a website that's kind of kind of percolating or, or still getting going there. So you've actually yeah, got... Yeah, we've got some work to do. Yeah, you've actually got quite, you know, quite a large amount of, of things to do with the website. I mean, I imagine that keeps you busy for several hours a day. For the, the yeah, program. it's a lot. It's a lot to do, I'll tell you. It's uh, it's I love doing it though, man. It's, it's such a joy to deal with the the public and answer the questions they have, especially what you do. But I don't go live all the time. I do most of my work behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's a lot of fun. But I figured I'd call in and say what's up. I saw your video. The Astro looks really good, man. Out of your hand. Yeah, yeah, sure. the, yeah. The Astro looks good. The IQ Two Emerald, I think, is going to look better. If I if I had if I'd have had some more friction, or if, I, if I'd have had some more games put on the lanes with something like a Phase Two or like a Crux Prime, I really like breaking down the lanes with the Crux Prime because it does with that chemical adhesion. It does have a much wider footprint. If you look at the oil tracks that come back on that sucker, taking that to like a thousand grit, you're going to burn the lanes up faster with that. And plus, I actually get a couple games of use out of it most of the time. But if I'd have had, um, I wanted to show them on a fresh, on a fresh lane, just because that's how most people are going to see them, whether they should see it or not. If you go to a sport tournament right. and you decide you want to pull the IQ Emerald out first thing, this is kind of how you're going to see it. And the point is kind of well, it's not necessarily the greatest idea. I still wanted to show them off for the videos, but uh, you know, just a little bit of information there too. Yeah, I mean, I love your videos, man. I mean, that's why we back you and everything else. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely, definitely, depending on the pattern, uh, pro balls look good, but flatter stuff, you definitely do not want those clean covers because they, mm -hmm. they make it difficult if you're trying to score on the tough stuff, for sure. Yeah, that, that second pattern that we had down at Gage Center, um, I actually did not use either the IQ or the Astrophysic. We bolt on that in a tournament. Uh, the following Monday, so the, the mechanic at Gage Center actually put that down for me to practice on, and I thought, well, I'm filming Thursday and Friday anyway, so it's perfect, perfect opportunity to do that. And while I played, or while I bowled with the, the Astro and the Emerald on the fresh, I didn't pull either of them out until game four, and late in game four of our, we had an eight game, it was an eight game sweeper, I didn't have them out until towards the end of the fourth game and early in the fifth game. So that's a more appropriate. Up to up to that point, I have been using the phase two. Right, for sure. Yeah, I mean those balls like phase two, uh, idle, halo with the right layout, that kind of stuff blends the pattern now. You know, I mean crux bomb. I know you're a big fan of that. Um, yeah. I can't say the same, sadly, but uh, yeah, those those smoother balls just look better, even on the not so flat stuff. Just if they're crisp back in, you gotta have stuff. Lower. Yeah, and that that's kind of the plan for uh, for nationals is the the crux prime is going to be the first ball in the bag for the team event because it is so Absolutely. slow off the end of the pattern that I think I'm going to be able to beat the beat the track. We're going to try to play three, four, five and beat that up a little bit and then move in just a little bit. But I've heard that the uh, the team team shot is really really crispy. There's a whole lot of hook. I'm just hoping that I'm, I'm thinking yeah. Crutch Prime is going to be what's going to slow it down the most. So. I think so. that's what I've recommended to everybody that's asked me. Even though I, I'm not a huge fan of that ball, mm -hmm. it does have its purpose. Um, and the people that I've talked to that, that went to Nationals this year, they threw nothing but slow symmetricals, uh, slow layout, a lot of surface, just because everybody knows how, how Nationals is. It's, it's difficult. 
and they pile up stuff that has really crisp back in. So you got to have stuff that's smooth and round, and you definitely, even the, the Astro Physics and the IQ Emerald are the, uh, the newest faults. You don't necessarily need those in the bag on the first game for Nationals this year. No, definitely not. I'm, I'm debating on whether or not to take my Halo, but the, the Crouch Prime definitely going. I did drill a new IQ Tour solid that is pinned down. It's a five inch pin, so the pin, that puts the pin right beneath my bridge, and it doesn't flare. It doesn't flare at all. It gets to the end of the pattern and just just kind of rolls up or kind of sits there, and so I'm thinking maybe that'll even that'll even be something to help me keep my angles closed. So and yeah, I think so. I mean, it sounds like my uh, I have one drilled up with a six inch pin that puts mm-hmm. the pin over my middle finger, yeah. and um, it once it gets there, it, it stops, it sits and rolls, and yeah. Uh, don't get me wrong, it's an IQ tour, it still gets the pin, but it's not bothered on yeah. the spot. And I think that's another thing where that definitely is going to have its, that's definitely going to have its use and its purpose or its its place. It's not something that you're going to pull out for the first game on your local house shot. But. For sure. Or you can, for me anyway, I can take anything on a house shot and make it look good. Um, when you have 12 to 1 out there, you know, it's pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty easy. You know, especially around here, the, the gutter hooks in the middle doesn't pose. Uh, Pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty good when uh when I've got the middle of the lane when I can hit the ball and kind of I like to do that kind of slow roll thing and when the, I can uh, mm-hmm. hit it and just kind of let it float right through the middle and then tip on the back end that that works out pretty good for me. Now I have some chicken winging problems <laughs> when I'm when I'm worried about so I can get I can get it going right really quick. It's just on something a little bit flatter. Right. It's it gets going right. Way, way too quick, especially when I don't, uh, especially when I don't break the lanes down the right way. But you know, right. in these videos, if I'd have broken the lanes down the right way, it would have looked like a house shot, and there would have been no point to having the sport pattern out there to begin with. So, absolutely, and totally. I'm sure the viewers understand exactly what you were aiming for. There, some might not. You know, it's just everybody. Not everybody understands it, but. Mm-hmm. I get where you were going with it, and I think it was, I think they were both awesome. I had enough time to watch them. Well, I'll tell you, I take it. I call in, see what's up. Yeah. yeah. So, so. Uh, let me see. So, how, what we have? Uh, how many different groups? We've got the regular SRG BBFS group. Then we have the drawings yeah. group, and then we have like an international yeah. drawings group. Uh, yeah, international page uh, for all the international needs. I uh, figured we'd branch out that way instead of having everything on the one page uh, where you can contact uh, myself or some of our team members about questions and uh, so forth, ordering bowling balls from uh, from overseas and that kind of stuff. Um, you can also email me and that kind of stuff. I can, when I get off here, I'll put my email in for anybody interested in some overseas merchandise. Okay, yeah, and I can, uh, I can put that down in the description too. So. I'll have my buddy James Kniffen pull all the Nick Brown information, so James, pay attention. You can pull that information and then send it to me, and I will put it in the description when this is all uh, when this is all done and up. Now, how does the I know that I don't, I don't know how far you can get into this or how far you want to get into this, but how does it work acquiring the stuff from overseas? Is there a distributor that you talk to? Is there a certain person you talk to, or or how does how does that work getting the international stuff over here? Uh, it's funny you ask, and I can, I can go into detail to a certain extent. Uh, I have a deal worked out where I can't get too specific, mm-hmm. um, but I do deal with uh, an independent guy over there who um, does order directly from distributors, mm-hmm. and uh, he, he orders what I need. Uh, he also supplies some other people, um, and, um, you know, I, I place orders as they come in. I don't there were some other people, I won't mention names, but there were some other people that um, would order in bulk and then not even sell it all, and then they wonder why they're in debt. So, uh, you know, I prefer not to be in debt, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, as anyone would. So, <laughs> you know, I, I order as the orders come in, and, uh, yeah, we back to Reds are a big popular seller. We've got those back in stock now. Okay. Ultrasonics, uh, which is basically the Sonic that we have here, but a different color. Um, and smell, so you know how they roll, they're different. Yeah. Not totally, not a ton different, but 
It's the same thing with the IQ Gold versus Emerald. There will be some differences to the, you know, to the ones that really do like the ball. So um, we have some new stuff coming out. Can't quite say what they are, but um, they're exciting and some covers actually better features balls here. So always Storm is always keeping me on my toes. Yeah. Yeah, between the, especially with you dealing in the the international stuff, I mean it's busy enough just on the domestic stuff, but with the with the, the market and kind of the culture over there, that is why there's so many frequent releases. Um, yeah, dealing in any kind of any kind of international stuff has got to be you're hopping <laughs> probably once every week or two on that stuff. Yeah, there's a new ball. It's a new ball every. Uh, I know about a new ball about every fifteen days. Yeah. Uh, for the things in, in Japan. Um, Hong Kong and, and places like that get stuff before Japan does. Korea is the last to get it. So um, we normally find out when it's released in Hong Kong, basically how that works out. Oh, okay. uh, so the yeah. other the other thing that we have going on is there's also a drama with logo infusion. And so you do <laughs> a lot of stuff with... Uh, you do a lot of stuff with logo infusion. I'm going to put my jerseys up here, and you've got design after design after design. There's all kinds of, of uh, designs that have been that have been made for the group. and um, mm-hmm. for, We have more in the works, by the way. Yeah, and for, uh, there. for some perks in that direction, I would suggest joining the group if you're interested in Jersey's logo on Fusion merchandise. We're not going to say exactly what that is. You'll have, to, you'll have to join the group to find that out. But it's uh, SRGBBFS on Facebook or Storm Road Grit Bowling Balls for Sale. You just enter that in the search bar and it'll come up. And uh, you'll have to fill out a little application with the... Uh, uh, there's all kinds of stuff there. There's, there's used balls. There's, there's older balls. There's discontinued stuff. There's rare stuff. And so if you're interested in something that's Storm Road or Grit, if you go to this page, you can put in a request. You can advertise something that you want to sell. But because there is selling and trading between members, you do have to do quite a bit of work. Um, you want to screen people a little bit coming in, and then sometimes there are some disputes that you have to handle. I know that yeah. those are always a whole lot of fun, but you do stay on top of them, and the, the community kind of helps police each other too. You know, if they have a bad dealing with somebody, they'll put it up there, or if they have a good, if, they're, yeah. if there's somebody like Carl Ramos that's really great on there to deal with, Everybody will say, okay, well, yeah, you can you can deal with this guy. If you have a question to ask about a member, say, well, I'm getting into a deal with this person, and how are they, you can put that post up there. Um, so it's just if you're into yeah. Storm or Rotor Grip bowling balls, period, you need to be a member of this group. That's just uh, what it is. Now, I'm going to put my jersey designs up here because you got me in touch with Brian Cooper, who is the national sales manager for Logo Infusion. And uh, you've got a bunch of, of great-looking jersey designs, some of which, um, depending on if people get their names on the back or you get, you get logos on there, especially if it's a custom build or something like that, most of the time people are thinking, okay, well, I want to go to tournaments and I want to look sharp, and if I'm spending this kind of money, I'm, I'm going to go all out. I'm going to get everything. But for, uh, but for myself personally, looking at these, uh, I'm going to look like a highlighter, but... <laughs> but uh, these are more, whenever I go out and practice or whenever I'm shooting videos or just go bowling, going to bowl league, like my wife and I have a mixed league on Friday nights, and uh, I'm the highest, uh, me and another guy are the highest averages in the league by 30 pins or something, and I'm not trying to walk in there looking like I'm going to a regional, but these these jerseys are so comfortable that once you bowl in them, you don't, yeah, you don't really want to bowl in anything else. And uh, talk That's to me the truth right there. Yeah, talk to me a little bit about Logo Infusion too, because all their stuff is made in the USA. They don't outsource like some of the other companies do. That's correct. Everything is made and assembled right here in the good old USA, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, I, think, I believe. Let's see. They were created in two thousand. Let's see. They were established two thousand eight. Okay. I believe. I hope I'm not saying that wrong. Um, they've been a sponsor of, uh, they've been widely known since like 2014, so we started adding staffers and, and so forth. Um, and then of course, their, the biggest thing, most youthful is from about, is they are the official jersey sponsor of Junior Gold. 
and um, that's, they've got a ton of recognition that way throughout the years. They've been sponsoring them for about three years now. Um, and just in Missouri, you just can't beat it. I mean, it's nice. It's, like you said, it's all you want to bowl in. Um, and, you know, I'm not just saying this because I'm on staff. I mean, they are the best out there. Um, it's all I want to wear. I want to wear this when I'm just going to the supermarket or whatever. I mean, they're just that comfortable. Uh, definitely. Yeah. yeah, so with yeah, my... Yeah, so, I mean... Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, go ahead. Nah, I was just going to talk about the... My, my idea with these with these jerseys here is that for... Yeah, I would probably wear one of these to the supermarket. Sometimes... Uh, sometimes people are a little... Like I don't, want, I don't want to walk in again to my mixed league looking like I'm pulling into a regional or something. But um, being a staffer, you also understand that we do have to, whenever we're in a bowling center, we do have to feature or show off our our company affiliation. So I'm on with Storm and Turbo and SRGBBFS, and so not only do I need to, but I want to represent them whenever I'm at the bowling alley, and so I need to be branded. I need to have their logos. Uh, right front and center and visible and everything, but I don't necessarily feel the need to walk in a big fancy jersey with my name on the back. And so the kind of idea behind these jerseys that I've got up here is that they're just kind of simple. They've got my logo affiliations on them. They're bright and colorful, but they're not they're not crazy. My name's not on the back. They're just there's no they're just crew necks. And so instead of somebody looking at me thinking, oh, okay, well this guy's walking into a mixed league and is He's got his name on the back of his shirt. He must think he's a hot shot or something. Hopefully, they'll look at the jerseys and go, "Oh wow, those are those are actually cool." So that's kind of the idea. Yeah, I mean, that. yeah, those those virtuals right there. I'm looking at the screen right now. You think they look good through a digital screen? Wait till you have them in your hand. Yeah. And putting them on, I mean, they they will pop for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really looking forward yeah. to. He just got those in production for me, and he said it'd be a couple weeks. So um, I actually should have them for the Vegas trip. So we're going. We're going the very last week. Of, it might even be the last couple of days of nationals. We're bowling the sixth and the seventh of July. And so I think I'll have the. Um, I should have these jerseys, and I'll probably I'll probably wear them down there. I don't need to. <laughs> even even at nationals, I don't really need to walk around with something with my name on the back of the shirt, but. Sure. Well, when you have as many followers as you do, uh, you know, you don't really need to. You walk in and you're basically known like a professional. That's how it works. And, uh, you know, I'm still learning that a little bit myself. It's pretty crazy. You go from your average Joe to pretty popular in the bowling industry, you could say. Yeah, yeah. It's a, and I, that's kind of the, I coined the phrase uh, hashtag bowling famous. I think bowling famous is yeah. kind of the best kind of famous to be because when you're out just walking around out and about, it, nobody knows you, nobody cares. But when you go to a bowling okay, alley, uh, yeah, when, when you go to a bowling alley, you, you can most of the time get all this attention and everything. It's kind of cool. So you can pick, you can kind of pick when and where you actually want to be famous. So exactly, exactly. I mean, it's like Jason Monty. Yes, he has a lot of followers and, and whatnot, but he can go to Walmart or wherever, and you know you. The, the average show is not going to know who he is, so it's pretty cool. And then when he's in his element, everybody's like, "Wow, it's Jason Lamonte!" You know, it's like Michael Jordan. But yeah. I think this is I think it's the coolest thing ever. Yeah, it is kind of funny. He can have it, it is kind of funny. I'm, okay. I'm sure that I'm sure that you're probably the same way. But it's a, it is a whole lot of fun having people come up and recognize you and say, "Hey, you're you're so and so," and then you want That's to talk cool. to him and everything else, but I'm like the most starstruck person on the planet. I got to meet Barry Crawley a couple months ago, and I about couldn't talk. I mean, it was it was like I was in junior high and or like grade school and had my first crush all over again. I mean, she's just standing there right in front of me, and you watch somebody on TV, and um, I'm, I'm a really big fan of Verity, specifically because she's all about bowling, and she's so, she's so understated, and she's a little shy herself. But it's just bowling, bowling, bowling. She's such a big bowling geek that she can't even hardly contain it. And so that's kind of why I like I like watching watching all of her stuff and uh, all that jazz. But yeah, it's I have a hard time talking to somebody that that I kind of look up to and I'm a fan of. But in the with the roles being reversed, I have no idea why anybody would be nervous at all talking to me or talking to you. I think it's cool. So I don't know. 
and I'm sure that that's weird. But. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think it, I think it's cool. Um, yeah, I kind of picture me a little bit uh, on Facebook if if uh, if you remember this. Yeah. I was like, yeah, so I'm gonna teach you how to, how to talk to the pros. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, you just have to kind of blend in and act like you know you're one of them, and if, when you do that. They'll hang out with you and talk with you, and you can pick their brain without even really trying to. Uh, a whole bunch you know, of stuff. So uh, I think it's I just think it's really cool. I mean, I go to these tournaments, people come. You hear that guy from Facebook? It's so nice to meet you. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, I, I don't get asked an autograph a lot, but when I'm in the center and have to talk to them, so yeah, it's really cool to do that. You know? Yeah, I think it was kind of funny. I was at the. Uh, uh, we got a, a girl her a girl here locally. Her name's Megan Nisley. I don't even know if you know her or not, but she has she has gone to so many of these tournaments for so long that she's friends with Marshall Kent and EJ Tackett and Jacob Buttrip and all these guys. And not just oh they oh hi you're a big fan. They're actually I mean they're actually friends. Like they'll go out after the bowling and hang out with them. And I was down at the U.S. Open and. Uh, I didn't really know the Nisleys that well, but I'd, I'd seen them because they, they live in Kansas City and bowl tournaments with them and everything. And they said, hey, we're going to, uh, it was just me down there by myself. And they said, well, hey, is there, are you here with anybody? I'm like, no, not really. And they're like, okay, well, how about you come out with us? We're going out with Tom Smallwood and Kyle Troop and Marshall and and everybody else. And I'm like, I mean, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to sit there in a corner and shake probably. But it was actually really cool. And the funny thing is, is uh, did you see my, my parody video? that I did of Diana Zavialova's spoiler video, her little kind of uh, shower little thing uh, that she yeah, did. Yeah, I remember that. And did you, did you see my parody of it? I'm trying to remember. Did you put that on YouTube or Facebook? I put it on YouTube. It's called An Intense Parody. And you'll have to go take a look. But we were sitting there, we were sitting there eating, and Marshall Kent keeps looking across the table at me and just keeps glancing at me and glancing at me and... Um, once we'd had, you know, enough drinks for me to feel comfortable with, uh, you know, just turning this video on <laughs> and showing their, everybody, everybody's kind of looking at me and they, nobody knows me and whatever. And I think some people have seen, seen the videos before, whether or not they care too much about them. But, uh, I said, okay, I think we've, I think we've, you know, had enough time to show you just kind of what I do. And so I turn this video on, I hand my phone over. And Marshall watches about 10 seconds, his eyes get real big, and he's like, you're that guy. He's like, I'd seen this video, and this is hilarious, and I thought you looked familiar, but I never put it together. You're the guy that did this video. And he just sat there and watched it and howled at it for the, howled at it the whole time. And I mean, it's pretty funny if I do say so myself. But, but uh, Yeah, I have to look it up. Yeah, it's. I wish I had more time because there were some other things I didn't get in there that I wanted to get in there. but. Speaking yeah, all of your all of your videos, especially the um, you know the heckin', I love that. I yeah. love that thing. Heckin', you know, yeah. um, that's a, that's one that's really stuck by you. Um, but your what was it? The hustle HYB video. That yeah. one was the honest opinion video, and that one, oh my gosh, the entire time I was almost crying laughing. Yeah, I know the about your opinion of it. Yeah, the, the like, thing. I didn't take this out of the bag. Or you know, next month they're going to stick, have a good one, guys. I'm just like, oh my gosh, it's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, man. Yeah, the, the heckin' thing comes from all the, uh, like the the doge and the, the, the all the memes with the, the Shebas and whatever. But. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Anyhow. Yeah. yeah, it's awesome. I mean, I love your channel. It's, 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 uh, it's really cool stuff. I that. Holler at you. We talked about those things. I was like, I don't know. You know, we'll see how the voice is. And I had some dinner. I, like, I don't think I can do this. I can call in and talk a little bit. So it's starting yeah. to feel a little bit better. Yeah. Cool. So all right, yeah. I've got I've got a bunch of questions well, stacking up here. So all right, I definitely appreciate you appreciate you calling in. I'm going to try to do stuff like this more often. So I might have to use you as an angle to get to get to maybe. Kyle Troop or somebody like that. I am uh, Brad Miller's from the area up here, and so I saw him at the tournament on Monday, and uh, he mentioned doing something. So hopefully, I can have some more more cool stuff on here. And obviously, uh, thanks for thanks for being a fan of the channel and asking me to join the 
SRG BBFS team. It's really fun. I'm a big fan of I'm a big fan of the um, the group, and so uh, it all works out. It's very cool. And thanks for thanks for calling and talking. Everybody, go check out the SRG BBFS group on Facebook and their other affiliated the the drawing and the international and then the websites websites still got a little bit of work but uh, it's getting there so for sure well thanks man and uh, I'll talk at you later All goodbye right. everybody out there on YouTube land yeah yeah thanks so much we'll talk to you later see you man bye all right so thanks for uh, thanks Nick for for calling in I've got a bunch of questions I need to catch up on here on top of that. <laughs> Um, and if a wife could bring me down, the drink of choice tonight is grapefruit bubbly. So if the wife could bring me down my blackberry bubbly, um, this is just flavored sparkling water. So there's no calories, there's no sugar, there's no nothing. It's just kind of natural flavors in sparkling water. And so it's, it's really cool. Really like it quite a bit. So hopefully James Kniffen Jr. has been uh, I've been answering most of these questions since I've been talking to Nick for the last half hour. Um, would R3S on the Astro have made it more like the Intense? Yes, with R3S Pearl, I know that this question is a little old, but I'm going to try to catch back up. If y'all are still watching, I'm going to try to catch back up on these questions. So, uh, yeah, R3S Pearl on the Astro would have made it a lot like a lot more like the Intense and a whole lot less like the Physics. No, uh, James has been answering about it, so you may not okay. have to. You can just go, yeah, what James said. Yeah, what James said. Okay. Yeah, I can go. I think Aaron A is helping me answer a bunch of questions. So there. Yeah, him and James are tagging. All right. So I don't know why James is sending me money. Thanks, though, James. I <laughs> I appreciate it. You're the one doing most of the work here. You're running the chat while I'm just talking at the screen and having fun. So anyway, um, since most of the questions have been taken care of, I'm going to finish my thoughts. On the, on the jerseys here, so the idea was something simple but sharp to to wear to league or out to practice, so that you don't walk in in one of your big hundred and fifty dollar, two hundred fifty dollar, if you're buying high five jerseys. But uh, it's something com it's something comfortable, it's something simple, it's something clean, it's something still bright um, and very you know, very kind of captivating and eye-drawing visually, and something that's just fun to wear without being crazy or busy or fancy or a top or anything. Um, I do not have the jerseys yet. If you want to wait to see how they come out, uh, that's fine. I'll have a video up in two to three weeks when I get the jerseys in. Uh, but if you like what you see, basically here there's a, I don't know how clear you can see it, and I will have a video detailing all this stuff, um, but it's just uh, a couple of plain colors. Actually, the blue, the pink, and the orange are uh, color matched with the turbo bag and backpack colors. So um, something for me is I can't wear, or I can't, I can't use, if Storm offers it, that contract takes precedence, so I can't use turbo bags or backpacks or anything like that. But I do like the colors, so this is a way that I can still show off some of those colors. I do have a couple of my own. The, the lime and the red turbo backpack colors didn't really look right as jerseys. The lime was a little washed out, the red was a little too dark. But uh, they really do, the rest of these look sharp on the jerseys, and then I made a couple of my own picks. Um, I will have more, more colors coming soon, but basically the idea is, and these are also not a package deal, so if you want to add, remove, or change any of the logos, or the, the next style, if you want something with a collar, if you want with your name on it, if you don't want all the logos that are on there, it's kind of a mix and match deal. The shirt by itself starts off at 60, $64.99, and I'll put all this information in, into the video but basically, if you're interested in one of these, you will send Brian Cooper, which is bcooper at uh, logoinfusion.com, an email, and you'll say that you want the loop design and the whatever color, if you want one of them or several of them. Uh, the base price is $64.99. Uh, the large full front chest logos are $10. The upper smaller left and right ones are $5 a piece. Hashtags are $10. And then a 
uh, sleeve logo is is five dollars. And so, as shown up here, with just in the the logo infusion stuff, they'll just put that on there for free because obviously it's good advertising for them. But uh, as you see it up here, um, this jersey goes for eighty nine ninety nine. And so the thing, the cool thing about it is it's kind of like a stock jersey. It's not, because if you go to, uh, if you go to get one designed, there, there is some art time, or there's some art time, some design time involved. So most of the time when you get a custom jersey design, you're gonna be looking uh, on the simple end at about $120 up to about $150, depending on how much time you have put into it. Um, I guess the low end would probably be more like, a, more like $100 up to about 150 depending on how much, uh, how many logos you have on there, how busy you want it, uh, how much design time it takes to take to get it right. But uh, as shown, these are $89.99. If you just, for instance, wanted the, wanted the general design or the, the color and just like the storm bolt in the middle, that's just $64.99 plus the $10 for the logo, $74.99. Um, um, so if you want to, I think they look pretty sharp the way that they are hashtag uh, repping all my brands but um, and then they've got these little white stripes down the side so it's not just the whole thing not just one solid color so the white stripes kind of kind of break it up a little bit I will have more colors I will have some of my own design these are kind of my uh, lead practice small sweeper collection I guess you'd say they are av available to purchase at logo infusion like I said um, I've taken care of the design costs and so all you have to do is send Brian Cooper an email. Again, it's bcooper at logoinfusion.com. Tell him you want the loop design and then whatever color you want. And uh, maybe say, okay, well, I want the Storm, I want the Storm logo, the Turbo logo, maybe not the SRGBBFS, or maybe you want the Storm logo and the, the SRGBBFS logo, or maybe you want, you know, small logo. Maybe you don't want the big chest logo. Maybe you want one logo here, one logo here, or you want an extra logo on the sleeve or whatever. It's all customizable. You can all kind of, all kind of mix and match and, and, and assemble it yourself, but uh, that's kind of what you're looking at there, and I will have a, a video with information on that going forward. But I think these are really, really sharp. I really like the idea. It was mine, obviously, so of course I don't like it, but... And these colors are really sharp. Really, the thing that prompted it is that my wife has the turbo bags. I really, really love the colors of them, how sharp they are. And so that's kind of where the idea came from to begin with. I'm like, well, I can rep the turbo colors if I just make a jersey out of it. And I'd already had the idea that it's like, well, I kind of just said, screw it with the, with the jerseys I wear. I'm like, well, I'm, I don't have anything, like, very simple. Even something like this is a little bit too busy or... Or, or flashy, and so I thought, well, um, I just, I just like, okay, screw it. I mean, if I'm going to look like a tool, I'm going to look like a tool, but at least I'm going to be comfortable. Because I just, I mean, it's just like wearing a golf shirt or something. It's just great. So, anyhow, let's see, astrophysics compared to high road pro. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a tough one. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. I think that's. All right, James has got all my stuff. Ball mirrors, brass. I'm throwing the astrophysics, so has the emerald look. Yeah, good stuff. Paradox black, nice hybrid. Two hybrids, problem nuts. I don't think hybrid pearl, whatever. Yeah, like James answered that one. <laughs> I said I keep your fusion on the way Yeah, I'm. I'm hoping that we do have another fusion re-release. That would be awesome. Hopefully, hopefully they'll get that in order. But... Uh, let's see. Show. Show. I need a raise. Yeah, you, you gave me ten dollars just to tell me that you needed it. Needed to raise. Uh, uh, show, yeah, I don't know why it's holding all these for review here. Show, it, it gets a little crazy whenever somebody posts a link, so I just gotta scroll down and make sure that I've approved all these links that James has been posting. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. 
Yeah, if it's broken, well, it's, it's strong ball, astrophysics. Yep. Um, who's talking? Nick Brown, yes. Yeah, James really does need a raise, actually. James is going to come visit here in a little while. He's going to have some surprises. So. Is there anything out there similar to the intense? No. Another intense. I think that it wasn't super popular. They haven't been gone for too long. I think distributors and websites probably still have them. So if you want an intense, I would get another intense. Uh, let's see. Yeah. The intense parody. Yeah. Sorry, but I have to watch the Yankees. Uh, What's your favorite baseball team, Richard? Is it the Yankees? I know. Maybe she goes out with one of the Yankees. IQ compared to the Hustle Inc. That's another um, big, big comparison there. Uh, ta -ta -ta. What should I get to? I don't know what I can get to fill the third slot in my bag. Uh, not looking for direct new rules. Okay. So yeah, you're probably with the with the exist being gone, you're probably gonna want something like a more like a not like a halo. Oh boy. Oh sweet, okay, we're down to the bottom finally. I, I skipped a bunch of these questions. So alright, now I have caught up with the chat. And so if you have any more questions that you want to ask, now is the time. Now is the time to ask them, and we are going to talk about some. We are going to talk about the. Bam! Love this TV. We are going to talk about the astrophysics, and I didn't want to minimize that. Um, would you add the emerald if you had the crux prime phase two and the high road? Yes, the, the emerald absolutely would slot right in between the phase two and the high road. That's. That's that's the simplest math that you could uh, that you could get. Why are all the new hustles almost identical? Why come out with three and not only one? That's kind of what happens in the lower end stuff. The hustles are kind of like, uh, let's see, uh, the destinies or the not really the vibes. The vibe would be more like HP two realm stuff. Uh, the tropical storms. The I don't know what the, the rhinos like Brunswick has on the low end. They're kind of entry, they're kind of specifically entry level. Oh boy, okay, so I missed Norm's question. Time actually does not help me, so you're just going to have to. I mean, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to have to scroll back up to, uh, to the question. As soon as I get done with the hustle question. Um, and so the hustles are more just different colors just to give you a variety of options or a variety of looks in kind of an entry level ball because most of the people that are going to be buying them are, are kids, really. They're not specifically really intended to be high performance, low reaction balls. They're more for entry level stuff. Now the Hustle Inc. is a different story. It's kind of a, it's, it's interesting, but all right. And I'll check uh, Ryan Martin. If you weren't with Storm Staff, who would you be? That's a really tough question because I am, I'm pretty big into marketing and advertising too. The, the thing is that if people don't, if people aren't initially intrigued or interested or excited about checking out your product, they're never going to check your product out in the first place. So it's, it may sound dumb, but marketing and advertising really is, really is important. It, it's what gets people in the door quality of the product and the uh, the product itself is what pe it, what keeps people coming back. But you have to get them in the door somehow. And I think that Storm's marketing is the, the best in the bowling industry. And that's a big part of why I wanted to be with them to begin with. Not only because they're doing crazy things and, and cool stuff and putting out really good equipment, but you know, just from a just from a, a YouTube point of view, I don't know. Well, I, I actually do know. I wouldn't have near the following I have, I wouldn't have the interest I have, I wouldn't have the views I have, I wouldn't have any of this if I was throwing stuff from another company because the interest just isn't there for the other companies like it is for Storm. So as stupid as it may sound, that's just honestly the way it is. I mean, I've been in the, uh, the pro shop industry for 15-ish years now, um, four or five of those as a, as a manager or a full-time guy, but 
I, I've been in kind of the in and around the, the bowling industry. I know what sells. I've seen the day to day. I know what people are interested in. I know what people are asking for. I see the social media posts. I see all these all these kinds of different things. And and Storm just has the best marketing out there. So um, all of that just to say I'm not sure whose staff I would be on or if I would be on staff with anybody at all if I was not on the storm. I've uh, actually, just for the sake of the question, because I know that I'm going to get asked it, I have, I have thought about it before and I don't want to dog on any of the, the other companies and so I'm not going to single them out, but the marketing for some of them is kind of rough. I don't quite understand the marketing for some of the other companies. And Storm is just kind of, they say, you know, we're an innovation company that just happens to make bowling equipment. And that's kind of the deal is, is they're, they're kind of more trendy and, and uh, things like that. And so they're not just, they're not just, well, we're a, we're a bowling company and so we're going to be traditional and we're going to be boring and we're not going to, you know, we're not going to be, we don't want to be too flashy and too crazy because, you know, this is bowling and we're supposed to be about the, the merchandise and everything. Well, it's like, well, why can't you have fun and why can't you be excited? about stuff. I mean, it, it just, putting out stuff that looks like this up here, that enables me to do all the marketing. And as soon as I saw the IQ Emerald, I'm automatically thinking Power Rangers and Dragon Sword. And so that's just super easy marketing. The colors are bright and, and everything. And the molds look cool and they roll great and they smell good. That's another thing that they've got going for them. So again, I don't want to dog on anybody else because there there's a lot of other companies that are making great equipment. So, I mean, that's, that's just being flat honest, but the, the marketing just isn't there for the vast majority of them. And so trying to sell a product that I don't really feel that much or can't quite get into is, is hard. When I see the storm marketing stuff and what the stuff looks like, and then we've got the sense, and then uh, Chad does all this great stuff, uh, and, and the whole team really in Utah, it's just, I just get excited Think about storm stuff. So, and that's that's one of the simplest simplest parts about marketing and advertising. What draws your eye? What excites you? What gets you interested? It's that. So, I mean, all right. So apparently, I have to answer this uh, Norm question because Norm asked the best questions, and I missed it somewhere. And I'm going to try to scroll back up and find it. Looking for Norm Jr. Looking for Norm Jr. I don't have timestamps on my chat, so unfortunately, man, this was a long time ago. It must have been right after I started talking to uh, started talking to him. Okay, and that's the top of the chat. So I have completely missed the Norm question. I don't see the Norm question anywhere. And I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time scrolling through looking for it. You happen to know the normal question? My wife is coming to the rescue because I can't find the normal question to save my life. You're in a forest and you see a pack of wild pandas coming after you. Okay. Only escape is to cross one of two bridges. One is made entirely of sonics and the other of matchup pearls. Which do you choose? <laughs> That's a great question. Yes, <laughs> I well, it would probably be this, no, because the Sonic, I love, I see, like, this is a great question, by the way, you guys don't know, like, Norm asks crazy and off-the-wall questions, but this is actually a great question, because while I, I love the Sonic, it always lets me down and disappoints me. I'll find it, you keep pulling. It always lets me down and disappoints me. It rolls so sweet, and then it either leaves a 10-pin, or a stone 9, or a 7-pin, or something. It looks, and she's on camera. Hi. Yeah. After grass all day. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. great. Right there. Okay. There it is. Are you good? Do you need anything else? Are you no, going to refill? No, you're good. Okay. <laughs> uh, pack of wild. Well, only I don't know that I'd want to escape from a pack of wild pandas. Like, who would want to escape from pandas? I mean, you're a panda. He's a panda. What are you going to do, big guy? Sit on me. So if I went if I went for the Sonic Bridge, I would feel really good about it, but it would let me down. So I'd have to think about that. The matchup Pearl, on the other hand, I I hate with a 
with a passion that is that just not can't be comprehended by mere mortals. And so I wouldn't even want to let that touch my skin. I, I'd just sooner walk across burning hot coals and jump into a volcano. But on the other hand, it might actually hold up. The sonic bridge, on the other hand, is is will definitely let me down. So, yeah. I think I would get trampled by the pandas, honestly. I would just let the pandas trample me. Honestly enough. Um, yes, you're well, probably not the only person that absolutely hates the idol, but it's a different type of it's a different type of reaction. So Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> yes, I do like subscribers. Subscribers help. Subscribers are awesome. Oh boy, let's jump on that. What ball really excited but, but was poorly marketed? Um, I don't want to get too far into this. I don't like the Ebonite brand's colors. I really have like some of the some of the ball names are really cool. And uh, Hammer's marketing is actually pretty cool. I kind of like I kind of like their angle because they have like a defined we're Hammer, we're the, we're tough, we're this. They have something, they have a vision, they go with it, and everything kind of works out. Some of the other ones are a little bit more confusing, but the Ebonite colors are generally all the Ebonite brands. Hammer does the best job of it, I think, especially with something like the Pink Widow. That that one's just amazing, and I know I'm not technically supposed to say that, but at the same time. If I was to just get on here and say, well, you know, the Pink Widow really isn't, it's like, well, that's just stupid and obviously biased, and so I'm not going to say it. The Pink Widow is heckin' uh, cool. But ebonite colors in general are just really kind of dark and drab and dull, and I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's a product of their, not their manufacturing or what, but they just look kind of the. And so I just I have a hard time with the colors of most of the balls, and some of the marketing for some of the companies is just a little confusing or or outdated or something like that. It just I, I can't do it. So um, everything with Storm is always is always bright and colorful and shiny and kind of kind of in your face or maybe a little bit over the top. But I mean the same. And some some companies can say, oh yeah, well they have all this flash and all this pomp and circumstance, but do they have substance? Well, I mean I think obviously. Um, and I think I think some people don't want to be with Storm specifically because they are the the trendy pick. Some people don't want to go. Well, I don't want to. Like I I held out on High Road for the longest time because I'm like, well, it's been out for forever. Everybody has one. I don't want to be a hipster and get a, a. Or I think I was being a hipster because I didn't want a High Road, and then I got one and now I'm on my fourth one right now. So I don't really think that. Uh, I don't think that a, a ball specifically was poorly marketed. I think just in general, I can't get on board with, with some of it. So. Again, I'm not, I, I, my dear friend buddy Anthony is on with Ebonite, and um, obviously this Pink Widow is what it is, and there's some other stuff that they're making that's cool, and so I, I can't dog the, the equipment or the, or the performance or anything. Um, I'm friends with several several Ebonite, Ebonite staffers, and obviously they have. I think they have most of the the women's tour on staff with them, and so you see that stuff all the time. Um, Jordan Richards looks awful good, awful good throwing the stuff, and Shannon O'Keefe is having success with her stuff too, and you know Anthony likes all the all the stuff he gets from. Them, so I mean, I just have a hard this. I I just like Storm, and this is where I want to be. I said I don't want to really dog on any of the other companies. I do have my reasons, um, but this is just this is just kind of the kind of the fit for me. And I think other 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 uh, companies would say, well, I don't like I don't like Storm because they're they're too over the top. I like kind of the more you know more normal kind of uh, uh, meat and potatoes kind of approach of, of some of the other companies. And so different things appeal to different people. Storm appeals to me, so. <laughs> How big is the IQ? How about bowling ball size? I wish you yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
You got the, the general circumference of a bowling ball. Um, yep, screw the balls, I'll take the pan, I'll just get trampled by pandas. I mean, honestly, Idle Pearl is really, really good. I think it is absolutely impossible, fun fact, for somebody to dislike both the Idol and the Idol Pearl. Absolutely, 100%, completely impossible. You cannot like them both. You cannot dislike them both. If you don't like the Idol, you'll like the Idol Pearl. If you don't like the Idol Pearl, you'll like the Idol. That's as simple as it gets. So, if James does not like his Idol Pearl, then we may have, uh, we may have some discussions there. And less than 2,000 pandas in the world. That's terribly sad. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I love my pink widow. It is drab and disgusting. See, I think if, if Stormer knew a pink ball, yeah, we've already done several of them. But I think if it's normal to do that type of a ball, they put some mica in it, and it'd be a bright, like, neon pink, and then it'd have some mica in it, so it'd sparkle, too. I, I think a storm pink ball would look just uh, way more amazing. But, um, yeah, the storm, the funny, they're, I, I, I've told this before, but uh, true story, there is a reason for the fragrances in the bowling balls. It's not just a, uh, a fun marketing angle. For those who have ever been in a pro shop when they were drilling a rubber ball, it smells like you're burning tires in there. Uh, there, is a, there is kind of a smell to, a certain smell to drilling a bowling ball. And for most normal stuff, it's, I mean, it's okay. But if back when they were doing rubber balls, uh, you smelled like a tire factory or like you're burning tires constantly. And so the, the person that started Storm, uh, Bill Christman, I think is the way that the story goes, he thought, well, you know, if I made the balls smell like something, you know, good, then it wouldn't smell like burning tires in a pro shop all the time. So that's actually where the idea came from. It was more of a practical idea than it was just a fun marketing thing. Hey, we ought to make bowling balls smell like stuff. So there's actually a, a reason for it. So root beer is is top five. The strawberry from the X Factor Triple Extreme is is OG triple OG all time. I mean it, it's the best one by a long shot. High Road's probably number two. Uh, yeah, phase. Yeah, torrent was a good ball. It wasn't really marketed well. I think the problem for the torrent is again. When I'm talking about colors, you look at the cor colors, and it was kind of a dark green. It was like a forest green and a dark blue, and it didn't have any reaction characteristics that really made people wow or take, you know, take any kind of interest in it. I think the drive was the same way. The color scheme didn't work for that ball at all. The torrent, part of the torrent's problem is that it came out with the timeless did, uh, the Belmo ball, and so it was just completely forgotten about. The torrent was a very good ball. It wasn't marketed well. Um, phase, yeah, the phase two as well, and yeah, that's exactly that is exactly why the phase two is because it, it's it's a good looking ball, but it's not bright or shiny. It's just kind of a, a darker a darker red and kind of darker blue. So it's not something that you're going to look at sitting on the shelf and just get wowed by. But it is it reacts so good that I don't think it's going to go anywhere for a while. And I think that's the thing is you know the pros started using it. The phase I think it was. I'd have to ask Chad about this, but I think that it was probably pretty close to being discontinued before it kind of caught its wave back up because it came out. And normally, there's a couple months where everybody buys them and they go kind of crazy, and then you can tell uh, around month six about how much longer it's going to be. And I think it went for about a year. They like to give stuff at least a year to uh, to kind of give it a chance. But I think the phase two was pretty well towards the end of its life life cycle, and then. You know, you start seeing them on TV, and they start seeing them in tournaments, and and then somebody like Chris Prather, that's like all he ever throws, and 
I've got, I'm on my third or fourth one. I've got another brand new one sitting down here on the shelf, just waiting for holes whenever something happens with my other one. It also holds up extremely well. I haven't had to detox my other one at all. I've got like 150, 200 games on it by now. It goes everywhere. It gets a ton of action. You let it get a little bit of lane shine, and it's great on a house shot. I mean, I, I, I've made so much money with this ball with Phase 2 here in the last couple months. Just lane shined on a house shot. And then it's really useful when you get on sport patterns because it, it, it controls the mid lane and it, it does have some punch on the back end, but not too too much. And it, it's continuous, so you can play all angles from it. You can shape it with your wrist however you want to do it. It's one of the best reacting ball that's, balls that Storm has ever made, period. It's just amazing. I'd actually put the phase two above the IQ Tour. If you said, if that's another interesting question, if, if Storm was going to dis you know, pick the two, a couple of the best balls that they've ever made and say which one has to go, I would pick the Phase 2 over the IQ Tour. I mean... Yeah, my tour. Yeah. Okay. Crux Series and the Matchup Hybrid were the worst balls. Match the first Matchup Hybrid was not terrible. The Crux Series, I did like the... Uh, I didn't have a Crux. I did have the Alpha and the Crux Pearl. I did like the Crux Pearl, but it was kind of like the No Rules Pearl. It was kind of a smooth, smooth climbing, not typical Pearl type reaction. So, and I just think the Astro looks a lot like the Brunswick Vapor Zone. Not really. I think the Brunswick, the, the Vapor Zone actually has a little bit brighter colors. And it's just kind of the blue and the purple, and it's just a little bit brighter. These, are, these colors are a little bit darker, and then with that kind of uh, that gray that they have in there, um, it's just every, everything is just a little bit darker. And I think Chad said on the live stream last week that he was, when he came up with the name Astrophysics, he really got into Neil deGrasse Tyson, and then he just like, well, what makes me think of one of those dark, you know, deep space nebulas or something with the blues and the purples and whatever else, and so that's actually where the colors came from. So they are kind of, they are kind of a little bit darker on, on purpose, but it does, I mean, it looks really sharp. As soon as you get to see these on Pro Shop shelves, uh, they're, they're both really, really sharp looking balls, so. Uh, ta -ta -ta. I might have to try my old pearl pin up then, so far I'm not a huge fan of a pin down. And it's probably because of the differences in our, in our games. Maybe I'll just have to send you another one to make up for a uh, the poor layout suggestion on the one that you have. Uh, let's see, I like the idle probe, not the idle. for phase two for the solid over the idle. And that's kind of where I, I like, I do like the idle, but when I'm going for solids, I haven't carried an idle around with me a whole lot here recently because the phase two just is getting all the work. Let's see. I played every session, but I spent out every session the first three and then didn't pour anymore. Huh, weird. Vivid spelled horrible before, after, and, yeah. Alpha Crush with the King of Nine Counts, it was kind of a different a different shape. Now, I think that's why it was popular with tour players, because it would blend out. It would, you know, do what it's going to do early and then kind of blend out the back ends. So, Rocket Ship better than Torrent? Yeah, kind of. I mean, they were, they were really similar balls. They had the same cover, and um, um, and they're just a little bit different on the core. I think one's the booster, and the other was the booster HV or something. So the numbers were just a little bit different. Yeah, the rocket ship was the rocket ship was beast. I think the rocket ship was actually a lot like the high road nano with polish on it. It was kind of how it how that shaped, but. Um, yeah, Rocket Ship and Torrent were both really, really great releases. And that's the other thing that I mentioned to Chad is I think that we need, because we've got three shiny balls, I think that we need another sanded rocket type release. And he said, I like the way that you're thinking. So, well, you said that about, that's, that was actually the other one that I had that I was talking about with, uh, with the astrophysics. I said, we need a pearl. Hopefully it's the physics. We need another shiny IQ type release. And then we need a, a solid rocket. Um, type type ball in the thunder line, and he said, "I like the way that you're thinking." So there may not necessarily be a, there might be another another solid high road or something. So 
I'm not trying to cover my tracks because I know absolutely nothing. I was trying to get all kinds of things out of Chad and 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 Justin Wyman we, about the, the Astro and the IQ, and they didn't give me nothing. So probably because I know I'm gonna pay off. Actually, I don't. But anyhow. Phase two and high road can kill 90% of house shots. Most of what I've been walking, most of what I've been um, going around with is phase two and idle pearl have been my go-tos on everything. The astrophysics is gonna enter that too. I'll have to see how the IQ Emerald reacts on house shots. But um, the idle pearl and the phase two have just been so ridiculously sick for me. But, okay, so how do we compare the astrophysics to the marble pearl? Astrophysics is an asymmetric marble pearl. That's the easiest way to put it because it's familiar. It's just there's more torque, there's more pop, there's more movement down lane out in the astrophysics. Otherwise, they're the same ball for 40 feet. And so, if you would like a marble pearl with a little bit more with more punch on the back end, that's the astrophysics, basically. So, not the exact opposite IQ tour over phase two. Nah. Yeah. Uh, you think that Storm will release a new phase ball like a hybrid version? Um, I hope so. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is with the... Because you had the original phase that wasn't terribly popular. I liked it. Um, I think that if there was something that was close to a, a Pearl Crux Prime, the original phase would probably be it. And then with as popular as the phase two's been, I can't imagine not not releasing a hybrid version with that velocity core because I think it's it's great, but at the same time they've had a lot of phase releases overseas. It's really popular overseas. And so I think when they had this idea for the centripetal HD core and the Sonics, I think that they wanted to go that route a little bit. I mean I could try to beg Chad a little bit, but um, the guy's pretty on top of stuff. I don't really think he needs my help. He's putting out some pretty beast stuff despite my recommendations. I mean the IQ Tour Fury still has to happen. I'm going I'm to keep after him just until the end of time on that one. IQ Tour Fury. Intense fire cover, C3 core, IQ Tour Fury. Bam. Bright crimson, cherry cinnamon scent. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I've got skills. Yeah, I don't have the, the, there was two different batches of the phase. I think the first batch was really early, really smooth. Um, I, I liked it. It reminded me of the trauma recovery, actually. Not really color so much, but reaction. Um, but the second more, the second batch are the, are not like the pastel colors. They're the, like the, the deeper, more pearl, typical uh, pearl cover colors. And that was a more traditional shape. So... Mm, Emerald gonna be similar to the well, yeah. That's basically the idea of the um, yeah the the gold the IQ tour the IQ gold which the IQ thirty was basically the IQ gold just a different color. So the IQ Emerald is basically the the gold ball, but a new version of it. And I think that again we talked about this last week, but I think if they had just re released the gold ball, it would have been how a lot of re-releases are, which is there's. I mean, it's, oh my God, the gold ball's back, and people were going crazy for like two or three months, and it's like, no, oh, it's just the gold ball. I mean, we had that before, so nothing, whatever. I think that this one looks a lot sharper. It smells better. It looks so great going down the lanes. I think that this was built more for longevity. I think that this is going to last longer. It's going to be more popular than if the original gold ball just came back. So I think this is one of those tough design choices that they got right. I think Chad nailed it on this one, so I really do. Yeah, yeah, the rocket series was great. All three of those rockets were were outstanding, and so that's why I'd really like another. Um, man, if we got a rocket nano, because they did did that with the Hyro nano, I would love with the original booster core, not the booster HV that was in the torrent. I want the booster core at like 254.046, I want to say, 254.046 with the nano cover. That would be great. What do you think, of, okay, 
So we do have some stuff. Ryan brings up an interesting question. What do you think we'll be seeing at a road grip next? And I actually talked to somebody about this. Yeah, I think I talked to Casey Murphy about it. Uh, Casey's a uh, storm staffer. He does have, if you want to look at his videos too, I like the way that he does his videos because they're they're kind of simple. They're just, if you're just one of those people that, that just wants to take a look at the ball reaction and you don't want to listen to me talk, most of the time I recommend people watch my videos with the sound off. Anyway, I mean, not the intros. You want to watch the intros, but when it gets to the ball reaction, turn the sound off the first time you watch it and just get a look at what you see from the ball reaction because what you see and what your eye picks up is most important, not what I'm saying. I'm just telling you what my experience with the ball is. Um, so um, uh, Casey's videos, he just has a little bit of music going. He has some slides every once in a while that kind of say, okay, well, this, it, it does this, and this is what I think, and this is what I see. Otherwise, it's just uh, a couple minutes of watching a watch ball reaction, and he compares it to a couple things, and so I like watching his videos because I, I'm not, I don't have too much information, which I think I can do sometimes. I think some people appreciate it, but I'm kind of the opposite type where I don't need somebody telling me what a ball is doing. I can watch 30 seconds of it. I can watch like six or seven shots and know all I need to know about that. And so somebody like Casey putting a video up like he does, that's just more simplistic and straight to the point, that appeals to me a lot more than even the stuff that I made. So. So anyway, if you want to watch Casey's videos, he makes uh, just uh, Casey Murphy is what you're looking at. But I was talking to him about the Roto Grip releases, and I said they have we have to get because the high road or the the, the uh, hypercell fuse has been discontinued. I'm saying so. I'm saying we have to get a hybrid halo. If we got a hybrid halo with that cover stock that was on the fuse, that's going to be an amazing ball. And if we have that same cover on an idle hybrid, that's going to be an amazing ball. What I really, really want is an idle hybrid, a halo hybrid, both with that E-Trax uh, hybrid cover on it. That's what I want, and that's what I really, really hope that they're going to do. But as he, uh, as he told me, he's like, well, they haven't really done... You know, aside from, like, the Daredevil series, where he went just... Uh, we went pearl solid hybrid. He said that they don't typically do that. And they didn't do that with the no rules series. We had the solid, then we had the pearl, then we had another solid. We never had a hybrid no rules. Um, they did have overseas, um, but the, then the stuff in the HP2 line doesn't really go for serious stuff too much. And then you get different stuff, like we'll have a, a haywire and a high wire. We never had a pearl haywire. Um, then we have like the hysteria and um, other things like that. We don't really have traditional series stuff where he picks one core and then he goes pearl solid hybrid. Schlimmer doesn't do that very often, so that kind of that kind of worries me a little bit. Or not necessarily worries me, but I'm, I'm really really hoping that we get an idle hybrid and a halo hybrid. I think that those would be, especially with that E-Trax cover, which I hated on the, on the Hypercell Fuse, and which I initially hated on the Halo Pearl, but now it's just one of the best covers out there, period. I love it, love, love, love it. I really hope that that's what we get. And then we have to have another HP2 ball. I don't think the winners have been that popular, though, so I would not be surprised to not see a winner hybrid. And of course, that would go hybrid on top of hybrid on top of hybrid. So I think that what we're going to, I don't, I don't know, that's tricky because we're due for a hybrid in all three lines right now. We don't have a hybrid out there, period, with the, um, with the Hypercell Fuse being discontinued. So we've got to put out a hybrid somewhere. I don't think it's going to be in the HP2 line. I think it's going to be in the HP3 and HP4 lines. I have no idea what's going to happen. If the HP1 line is already taken care of because the hustles were, were pushed back a little bit. Um, those don't actually come out for another week, and we, the staffers, can't even get a hold of them for another week. So, so the hustles are taken care of. So we need a ball in the HP2, HP3, and HP4 line. Typically, Roto-Grip does some big things at Bull Expo, and so I'm really hoping hybrid idle hybrid halo. Um, 
we can get hybrids in the HP and HP3 and HP4 lines. I don't know what's going to happen in the HP2 line, but I can pretty well guarantee we're not getting a winter hybrid. Uh, because the original, I'm not sure that people are really sold on the name to begin with, and the core is kind of weird because it's a little higher RG and that differential is huge. And the winter solid was pretty good, but I don't think, I think people are having trouble matching up with that core. And I think that the winter solid, the, the color, it's kind of along the lines of the torrent. It just, nothing really stands out too much about it, so I don't think it's selling that well. I don't think either of them really sold that well, <clears throat> unfortunately, because they did have a place that winter, I'm telling you what, on a fresh half shot for a game and a half or two games, was just could not miss. It just, when I had to move with it, it just wouldn't happen. And the winter solid is in the vein of the rocket ship and the torrent. It's a great but kind of boring ball. So, oh boy, there's another norm question. Now, do you think Storm would release a strong core with a weaker cover like they do overseas? Um, that's what they've been doing with the code line, and that's actually what they did with the astrophysics. Um, because it's got R2S Pearl on it, which is a medium, which is actually lower than kind of, if you've got straight medium on Storm Chart, R2S Pearl is actually a little below that. So it's one of Storm's weaker cover stocks, but it still it still works really well. And so there's no reason not to utilize it. So yeah, that's what, they, that's what they've that's been doing with the codes. Um, all three of the, the Code Black, Code Red, and Code X all had R2S variants on them, and now the Astrophysics has R2S Pearl on them. So yeah, they're they're going to they're going to continue to keep doing that because it just reacts so well. All right, you wake up. Oh crap! Every once in a while, this chat freaks out. So um, show show. Thanks, James, for pushing that stuff. Okay, you wake up in the 1920s and you find yourself going bowling with the Wright brothers in a bowling lane inside the little house on the prairie. Which ball do you bring and do you go flying on the plane? No, I do not go flying on the plane because they didn't know much about flying back then. Uh, bowling ball inside the little house on the prairie. Let's see. What makes the most sense? Probably the IQ. Just the regular old IQ, something vintage, maybe the high road. Vintage ball for a vintage show. I uh, wonder when Storm will pull out Spec Pearl. Spec Pearl is going to be really tough for them to get right because Spec is kind of like the, the nano cover in the sense that Spec is really early, it's really smooth, and that's not what you want in a Pearl reaction. So I think that figuring out how to do Spec uh, for a pearl anyway, I think it'd probably work for a hybrid. Uh, but spec pearl, I think, is going to be a little tricky. We may not see spec pearl because we don't really see NRG pearl over here anymore. I think we have it on the have it on the virtual gravity nano, the virtual gravity nano pearl, and it is overseas on some other stuff, but we just don't see it here anymore because it's not a super consumer friendly. It's not that length and big back end that uh, that we like over here in the states. So. And with, with as few releases relatively as we put out here, when they put out a ball, they're, that ball is the thing, and they're pushing that, and that's going to go for several years. Overseas, they go through them a whole lot quicker because of just the culture over there. So, yes, thank you, James Kniffin. That's why. Yes, getting the emerald. Heck, yeah, I'm working. Yep. The energy hybrid phase is the perfect ball. Probably, I mean that's go over to the show. <laughs> Alright. IQ Tour Pearl length with more pop is it geared to a slower speed bowler? The IQ Tour Pearl more so than the, the Astrophysics. The astrophysics is going to have a lot more torque. The IQ Tour Pearl is going to be more controllable. So, yeah, the, the thing is, the Crux Prime, if people give it a second and actually find out what the ball wants to do, I had I had a ridiculous couple months with the Crux Prime earlier in the season, or I guess later, later in the season, really whenever the ball came out for the next couple months after I got it. And it's just not how I typically play the lanes. I don't kind of 
start and just kind of slow, just kind of dump out of the ball right down second arrow or something. That's not how I normally go, but that's where the ball wanted to play, and that's where it was looking good, and I threw that until that hit with Pearl. You know? Probably should have kept throwing the, but I mean, I, I, I shot 300, 800 with the, with the Halo Pearl, I just like I did the Prime, so. Yes, awesome IQ review video, I'll have to go watch it, yep. Tweet, 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 Daredevil, um, yep, yep, yep. Um, his, his new batch of reviews were really good, I think you're talking about her, I don't know if you're talking about minor cases, but the answer is yes, there. Keeps making them better. Yeah, it, I mean, I don't know who you're talking about. To, to just subscribe to Casey Murphy, good stuff, yes. Again, because he he keeps it simple. There's not the there's not the production. There's not the he doesn't have the production stuff. He doesn't have the over the top stuff. It's clean, simple ball reaction. That's it. So, and a lot of people would call that low effort. I don't think it's low effort at all. I think that I put in too much effort on some of this stuff. I like I I really like his style and how he does it. And while we're at it, uh, Wichita Ball Reviews is the other channel. Austin Bowles and Justin Romick's kid Jared do those. So uh, some of you from the uh, PBA Tour in the 90s remember Justin Hromick. I think he was the 96 U.S. Open champ. 94, 96, 95, somewhere in there. Um, uh, Jared, his son, just graduated from Wichita State, I'm pretty sure. If he didn't graduate, he's still going there. Uh, but he's, he's pretty good, too. And he's one of those super well-adjusted, just nice, always smiling kids. And then Austin Bold is a, is a great uh, local, local bowler that uh, goes nuts at PBA Regionals every once in a while. Another kind of a quiet guy that's not really flashy out on the lanes, but I mean, you just have to pay attention to the score, and he's, he's up there pretty well all the time, so. Uh, okay, so we gotta scroll down. Ryan Ford. Thanks for the great weekend. Yeah, thanks a bunch, Ryan. We actually had Ryan's one of my uh, uh, Patreon subscribers and one of the guys in the in our Discord chat server, and he's actually he's from Iowa, so he's pretty close to us. And so he came down. He's, he's this is probably the third time I think he's come down um, for for some lessons and just to hang out. We had a and he actually he got to come down and see the set, and then I took him up there and poured the little crap out of him for a little while with some editing stuff. Um, and then he went to the tournament with us on Memorial Day, and his first experience on a sport pattern was turnpike. So those of you that know what I'm talking about, yeah. So, all right, the gun energy you saw in overseas coat, really, yeah. Um, Crep's trying is very smooth, yet really smooth. I like it, but again, like Nick Brown was saying earlier, it, it has its it has its time and place, and so I don't throw it very often, but man, when I do. And actually, here is the thing of why I haven't had, I do need to do too much report cards on the, or too much report card for the Halo Pearl. I'm doing a six month report card on the Crex Prime, because the whole thing with it is longevity. Um, when I wasn't throwing it, it was my spare ball for a while. And I just, I've been practicing for Nationals here the last couple weeks. I took it to 2000 grit and it reacted just like it did on a box. And all I do is wipe it off the towel. So that cover is legit, legit. And you're going to see it because I'm going to film entirely new video for my Too Much Report card. It's going to be a, a, a six month check in or a six month review or something. And so I'm actually going to put the work in on the Crux Prime and not just you know show the original footage and say what I think about it. I'm filming new footage for that for that uh, um, for that report card video. So opinions on ball companies recycling releases does it mean they can't come out with anything new? Not really. Here's here's the thing with the recycling releases. It's like in the movie industry when they put out sequels or reboots or anything like that. People are inherently drawn to something that's familiar. Like if you go to a new restaurant, you've never been there before, and you're a big fan of chicken fried steak, and they have chicken fried steak, you're probably going to get chicken fried steak. Because you just have a familiarity with it. Um, 
that's basically what happens when anybody tries anything new. They try to find what's most familiar about it to them and jump onto that. And so obviously, why is the IQ for Emerald got so much buzz? Why are, you know, they actually had to delay shipping to the staff for a little bit because their distributor orders were so high. And it's sexy, it looks really cool, it smells great, but it's the re-release of the IQ Tour Pearl, which is driving it. Because it's, it's the nostalgia factor, it's the you know what you're, it's the confidence factor is really what it is. You know what you're getting. If you have something new and wild that comes out, you're kind of taking a chance on it. Um, okay, well this is a, and that's why, that's why I think that the new spec cover came out on as the Crux Prime and not as something totally new because everybody's thinking Crux, or I remember that core, that core was great, but it's evolved or it got something new about it, so they did use something that was kind of nostalgic and some, something that people that had familiarity with. And then they built on it, or they used that as a vehicle instead of just introducing a whole new cover and a whole new core all at the same time. Um, I think that have that familiarity factor. That's why Hammer's been so successful with the Black Widows. When somebody, you know, there, there's people that have told me it's like, well, when a new Black or when a new Black Widow comes out, I just go buy it because I mean, you know what you're getting. And I think it's there's a difference between having something new for just the sake of having something new an actual improvement I think if you're not making an actual realistic visible understandable technological advance I don't think that there's really any reason to just make new stuff for the sake of making new stuff I know that that's kind of motives angles that they say well we're never going to use we're never going to recycle the same stuff we're gonna, you know, we're gonna get a new cover every single time and, and stuff like that. Yet the Venom Shock, which is almost five years old, was one of the most popular balls, and they brought back the Primal Rage because I think that they, they, the, their uh, developers over there got the idea and understood that nostalgia and familiarity is what pushes product. I mean, you make something that's just outstanding, like like a high road, and then you don't screw it is basically what the deal is. So I don't have a problem with recycling releases. I don't have a problem with Hammer continuing to make Black Widows. I think that's incredibly smart of them. I don't have a problem with Motive not discontinuing the Venom Shock. It's one of the best balls they've ever made. And they should not ever discontinue that ball. They shouldn't. Dis they should just leave the Primal Rage alone. Uh, because that's one of the best balls they've ever made. They need to bring back the uh, Sigma Tour. Uh, the Sigma Tour and the Covert Revolt, they brought those back and just left those alone. No problem with that. I hope Storm never discontinues the Phase 2. I hope they never discontinue the IQ or the IQ Emerald or the High Road. The High Road Pearl, I'm really, really mixed on because I just got a High Road T, which is an overseas version, and it is so much money. And now, <laughs> you saw so you saw Jason Belmonte throwing his High Road Pearl because that other bay at Thunder Bowl, or wherever the, the, the World Series of Bowling, that other bay was so frickin' crazy that he had to bring up the High Road Pearl, and I think a lot of the pros saw that and remembered, oh, yeah, we have a High Road Pearl, and it's awesome. And so now all of a sudden you're seeing those on TV all over the place. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's the other company who's still playing catch-up, to be honest, uh, because the tech is still successful and still selling, do it for R2S and Gas Mask 4. From, yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's honestly... That's, that's kind of what I said in my Sonic video, my, my Sonic opinion video. That was that was kind of funny. It's like I don't know, nobody else made anything better. So, um, but and I think um, again, a lot of people are when something comes out and says it's R2S Pearl again, it's really familiar. I know what I'm getting, and so I can be a hipster and say oh, I want something kind of more exotic or more interesting. But at the same time, you get out there and you start throwing the balls and you just completely forget about the, the makeup of it. It's like, oh crap, this ball is awesome, like the astrophysics. Uh, it's like, I mean, this ball. <clears throat> it's like, this ball's awesome, so, I mean. Uh, which sub are we using now, the bowling fix? Yeah, so go check out, uh, go check out the bowling fix. Austin, and uh, Austin makes some good videos. With, uh, Jared Brunick. Uh, 
Yeah. First time on a sport bike, it was turn bike. Yeah. Yeah, the physics, that's, that's the thing, and I think that's the thing that really makes the astrophysics work, is because it is kind of that weaker cover stock, but there is so much torque in that atomic core down at the end of the lane, but the physics is really, really booming for it. I, you know, when I heard it was, before the physics, when I heard it was NRG hybrid, I was not expecting what I actually got. It was quite a bit more length and quite a bit boomier uh, than I was expecting, and so with the astrophysics, I'm thinking, so this is going to be, this is going to be some big wheels on the back end for our 2S Pearl. It's already clean and sharp, but this is going to be the this is going to be the big show. And I I drilled mine really weak, really weak and pretty smooth. And you saw it still did boom pretty good. So if you drill it, if if you it's a flippy ball, and if you drill it flippy, it's going to be a monster monster on the back end. This stupid thing. I'll, I'll be scrolling down through my comments and kind of checking stuff out, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it'll just skip ahead. Yep. Yeah, physics is. I think the physics will probably be around for a while, or if it goes anywhere, I'm going to get a couple of those to stash because it's a little, it's a little different. Rogue Blade, almost a dead match for the Sigma Sting. I didn't have a Sting, but I know that everybody everybody talked about it. I think I was, by the time the Sting came out, I was on the Storm, so. I did have a, again, I did have a Sigma Tour. That was phenomenal. Six vibes, but 26. I mean, 86 Black Widows and 26 vibes, maybe, maybe two minutes. Interesting. Uh, yeah, innovation for innovation's sake is, is pointless. I mean, really is. Unless it's something like the atomic core that's in the physics, that core is great. They, they took their time on that. The spec cover is pretty great, too. I think that people, once they... The Crux Prime is not one of those stand left and throw right type of balls. I think the people that have figured it out really do enjoy it because it is different. It is different. It is you know, innovation or a step forward. Didn't Radical pretty much copy the code red? They pretty much copied the code red or the code black and then the code red, and it was actually intentional. They saw, well, we need a reaction like the code black, and so they intentionally tried to make the katana like the code black. So, but, I mean, that, that happens all over the place. That happens all over the place. Um, if somebody, and there's even, there's, there's companies now that a lot of the companies are trying to kind of copy or replicate the score of colors just because it's better for marketing and advertising. But there's only so many colors out there. There's only so many kinds of ball reactions. And um, I think that the Storm would be kind of dumb not to try to copy the Black Widow to a certain extent because it's just somebody makes an advance and who else has that? Uh, didn't didn't Motive just come out with some kind of a cover that's supposed to be spec-like, in in theory? That's uh, they didn't come right out and say it quite the same way. But there's another cover out there now by one of the companies that's kind of the same thing. It doesn't absorb oil and it doesn't. Um, it's a little bit a little bit different. So um, did you use either new ball on my instrument? Yeah, I used the Astrophysics for games five, six, and seven. I, I was I was minus 114 after four games, and I finished at plus 12, due in big part to going 102 over in games five through seven with the astrophysics. Uh, but again, I didn't throw it on the fresh like I did for the videos. I I waited until the lanes got there. So yes, Storm Optimus never got the. Never got the pub, but in many ways, more pop than a Marvel Pearl. Probably not. And the funny thing with the Optimus is it looked really good, but it was virtually, it was the same cover as the Marvel Pearl with a different core, and it just didn't really react like it. My wife still has one she throws all the time. Uh, but I probably not. And the Optimus Solid really wasn't that great. There's a couple of people that liked it, but that's the Optimus line just kind of died right there. And I really, I like that core, though. 
So and now we're talking about conspiracies. What do you think they'll be showing for Bowl Expo? I talked about that a little bit earlier. Uh, from Storms in, I don't know, but I do know that they have stuff coming. Bowl Expo, you can't, and of course that's not leaking any information or anything. You can't go to Bowl Expo and not release or show off something. Because they're going to have, they've got these releases coming out on the 21st of June, so they're going to have something at Bowl Expo, which is towards the end of June, that they're going to announce that's going to be released in early to mid-August, right in time for release. You know what's going to happen, so I don't have any clue. With Roto, I kind of have a clue. With Storm, I don't have any, we've got to be getting a Thunderline release. I know that, we just got the matchup BRB and the Hotline. And then I don't know, stuff's been coming out so fast in the Premier line, I, I just don't know. And especially, I did ask Chad this question, and I don't really remember what answer I got, but I'm like, how do you go about building, well, I need to, yes, hello, you're the star of, of my intense parody video. This is mistletoe, and you just came down to say hi and get your ears cracked, didn't you? Hello. High five. Hello, oh. You, you're, you're fuzz. You've got fuzz. You're going to have to go. I'm sorry. I know. Yes, I know. You smiled. I'm going to go with them. I know. You're funny. We'll get them. Yep. Um, so... Man, I'm just not, I have no earthly idea what they're going to do, at, what Storm's going to do at Expo. I have no idea. I would hope for, uh, I mean, a Rocket Nano, I haven't ever, I haven't thought about that, a Rocket Nano would be epic. I'd really like a Rocket Nano. But some kind of a new core around the 254-ish, 046. Um, or maybe they, maybe they might do another high road. That wouldn't be a bad idea, but just maybe a, a sanded high road because they don't have anything sanded in the Thunder one right now. And so there's, I think there's a, they've got a big gap in lower end bowls or medium hooking bowls with with solid covers or with surface more specifically because they got a lot of they got a lot of a lot of shiny stuff in the low end, and they've got a, a bunch of stuff with the, with the astrophysics coming out now. But they had a bunch of surface on the high end, and they had a a bunch of shiny on the low end, and I think they're going to try to balance that out a little bit. I have no idea. Um, I don't know about the... We talked a little bit about it, if there was going to be an intense solid, and Chad said there was no... He could say that there was no immediate plan, so I can say with a lot of confidence we're not going to see an intense solid. Now, it would make a lot of sense for them to keep going with this physics thing and give us a physics, a solid physics, I don't have any idea what the cover for that should be. NRG solid is really, really good. So if we got, or even a, even a spec solid physics, do the spec solid now, okay. So I'm gonna put a bug in his ear about that. But if we got a spec solid physics, because the Crux Prime is really smooth. It's really slow, it's really smooth. Not everybody's cup of tea. But with as much torque as this atomic core has, that plus spec solid could bring that cover up to a little bit more, uh, to be a little bit more consumer friendly, a little bit more familiar shape, a little bit more pop on the back end. Uh, a spec solid physics would be completely and totally legit. And the Sonics, I don't know how everybody feels about those. I don't really like them, so, or they don't. Let me put it this way, they don't work. They just don't. I love the Sonic to death. The Supersonic, I just it just doesn't work out. I'm not terribly interested in the Sonic, I just love to death and it hates my guts. Uh, but now that we've got uh, the other stuff back out, the Sonic solid would be insanely crazy. I don't know why anybody would even do that. And I did I think going back to my point where I was asking, how do you go about designing a ball in a line that's already got like a like a goat. Like how do you go about 
building a hybrid ball in the thunder line without stepping on the high road's toes. And he said, well, we really don't pay a whole lot of attention to it. We just try to fill gaps. We try to fill gaps we try to fill holes. They don't pay too much attention to whether it's going to be very similar to like the IQ or the high road. If it ends up being that, cool, but most of the time it's probably not going to be because they've already got that type of a look or that type of reaction in there. Um, and in the, the master line, they were missing a shiny IQ type reaction, so that's what they did. In the Premier line, they've got a bunch of big covers. They've been releasing R3S and Spec and all kinds of that stuff all over the place. But since the Code Black, Code Red, whatever else, they haven't had a kind of a weaker shiny cover up there, so that's why they went that direction with that. So. Oh wow, I'm all the way to the bottom. Interesting. Yeah, I had a few people said they had a Code Red and Slash and couldn't know the difference. That was intentional. Uh, what have you been working on in your game and how are you going about it? Um, I have not started working on what I want to work on because I had a really bad day at the tournament the other day. And again, I finished it at plus 12, but it was just because the pattern came to me. I will bowl anybody virtually on the fourth and fifth arrow because that's just my thing. I can get deep and I can slow roll it and I can trick it to get it to finish. If we're, if the shot gets into fourth or fifth arrow, I'm going to be really strong. Otherwise, it's going to be rough. And it was super rough at the tournament for the first four games because the lanes hadn't quite come to me yet. And I was, I haven't been executing the best because I've been on, on sport patterns. Well, I haven't bought bull on house shot in a month. And I've, I've just gotten tight bowling on the sport pattern because my game is built for fourth and fifth arrow on a broken down sport pattern or third arrow on a half shot. That's that's my wheelhouse. If you give me third arrow on a half shot and you know laying the ball down on 36 or 37 on a sport pattern, then I'm I'm going to be tough to beat. But anything outside of that and my execution, that's when my execution starts to fail me. And the, the cut to the top eight was only uh, plus 38, so I missed out by 26 pins after going minus 114 to start the day out for the first four games. And so if my execution would not have, if my execution had not failed me at that tournament, I, I might have been one of the top couple qualifiers because Brad Miller finished at uh, plus 210 or something. That was easily out there because I went plus 120, I went plus 120 something the last four. And so if I had gone plus 120 the first four, or even just minus 50, I, I'd have been fine. But it was my execution. It was my execution that just screwed me. And I think that the biggest problem is that I look at the foul line. Obviously, I have kind of a weird swing, but I look at the foul line. And so the interesting thing is when you look at the foul line, uh, your slide foot's here. I'll try to show the slide foot's here. And your target is going to be, like, really close. But if you're looking at your target at the foul line, everything, your, uh, your perspective, your whole kind of lane view is straight forward. Well, if you're playing fourth or fifth arrow and you're looking at the foul line, at your target, and it's where it's supposed to be, uh, at release, your whole perspective is straightforward, but you're trying to throw the ball that way. That doesn't work out very well. And so if you shift your whole perspective that way to look at the lane the proper way, then all of a sudden, you're looking several boards right of where you really should be laying the ball down. So most of the time, I don't think that I really chicken wing the ball as much because because I have, because of my physical limitations, I did have a pretty bad shoulder dislocation uh, 12 or 13 years ago or something. I lost a lot of strength and didn't do my rehab the right way. So that's my fault. But I don't think it's lack of strength so much because when I'm really comfortable, I can get everything in pretty close. And when I'm playing straighter angles, it actually works out really well. That tournament that I just made a bunch of money in down in Pittsburgh, I played between second and third arrow pretty well the entire tournament. And that was, I, I mean, I shot the second highest all of its score out of the, the whole tournament. So, so 
So, and that was from playing straight, but when your angles are more closed, the my target at the break point is more in line with my target at the at the foul line where I'm looking. But the deeper I get, the further my target is going to go to the right. And if I'm looking at the foul line, it's going to be so much. It's going to have to be so much further to the right so that I can get the ball going the right direction. If I'm looking at a target at the foul line right here, then my whole perspective is looking straight down like 35 instead of out to 10. So I think that if I can start looking at the dots or something, I've tried, I've done that before, but correlating where I need to look at or how I need to view the lane when I'm targeting the dots and getting that all lined up is just something I haven't had the time to work on. I'm also going to try to work on opening up my shoulders a little bit more and giving my swing room because my shoulders stay really, really closed. And so that doesn't help me clear my body a whole lot, especially when I get in deeper. And so I'm trying to work on clearing clearing my body and lining everything up a whole lot better. So I think those are the two things I need to work on opening up my shoulders a little bit more. Because uh, Brad Miller and Devin Bidwell finished first and second in that tournament. And once the lanes got really crispy, I had a chance at making the, I had a chance at making the, I still had a chance at making the top eight. And I actually started that last game with the front five and I needed something in the 250s. And then it just got, I, I went to my high road tee, and it just got a little too dry for where my execution was at because I had to bail out of it so much to get it down the lane. Then a couple times I looked a flat 10, and I left, uh, I think, a four pin, and I wrapped a 10, and so my, the, the heads just got too dry. But watching Brad and Devin when they were bowling, because of their better body mechanics and being able to open their shoulders more and clear out the way and keep their hand behind the ball and get inside of it and use the angle for projection more than the oil, it's, it's, it was frustrating sitting there watching them, knowing that I have a bunch, up here is really good, down here is not so much. And this is what this is what failed me. It wasn't ball reaction, it wasn't my lack of knowledge, or it wasn't nerves, it wasn't anything else but my mechanics. My mechanics failed me. And in, in part, I'm kind of glad that my mechanics have really sucked for the last decade because just to get by or to do to have any kind of success or bowl well at all, I've had to really, really focus on knowing all I can about ball reaction, layouts and surfaces, and just paying so much attention to ball reaction that I, that I constantly look at people and think, man, if I could throw the ball like them, I would average 250. Because I'm always in the right spot, I always make the right decisions, uh, always, I mean, the vast majority of the time. I, I know what I need to do, I can't do it though. So, I'm really going to work on, number one, uh, I'm going to try to target somewhere else other than the foul line because it just doesn't work. And I'm going to try to open my shoulders up a little bit more so that I can clear my body so that I don't have to chicken wing it to get around my body and then have my perspective going that way with my targets that way. So those are the few things that I'm going to start working on when I get a chance. Um, we did just get a, uh, we got an emergency foster dog last night. So we've got Roxy with us for a little while. And then we had a, um, um, we're having a garage sale, we're having a neighborhood garage sale this weekend, and we have brew at the zoo tomorrow night, which is where they set up a whole bunch of beer stands from craft breweries in the area at the zoo, and we get to go drink and look at animals. So uh, there's going to be some food trucks in there, so that's going to be awesome. Uh, Sunday we had lane inspection. Uh, Anthony, my beer friend buddy Anthony Lockwood is going to come down. We're going to go uh, bowl a little bit, and we're going to go eat somewhere. Um, next week we have a charity golf tournament. Uh, on Saturday, and I haven't golfed at all this year, so Friday's going to be some golfing, so I can't go bowling on Friday and then go on Sunday with something else. What are you borking at? Panda and Panda Bear Productions is making noise out there. And I'm thinking it's about, it's getting pretty close to bedtime, so let me uh, answer a few more questions and then kind of wrap this up here, I think. What's the measles? No, I'm going to put Roxy on Oh, we're going we're gonna to show you our, uh, we're going to get Roxy down here and put Roxy on on TV. Roxy is our new little foster dog. Positive Tails. Positive Tails. P-A-W. S-I-T-I-B-E. Positive Tails in Kansas City. Oh, I baby. I know. You want to hop up here? Come on, she wraps up. Come on, sweetie. Come here. Hello. Come on. I'm probably not. I yeah. haven't picked you up yet. Yeah. Baby. 
Yes. This is Brox. Oh, God, look at that face. Yeah, I know. Are you terrified? <laughs> yeah, you're not sure we, about we all, Yeah, we only, we only got her last night, so. Look, there she goes. Yeah, she, okay. Oh, the Roxy. Yeah. Yeah. Holding is not good. Yeah, yeah. That's why she's great. <laughs> yeah. No, but she yes. is a, she's a whole lot of, she's a whole lot of fun, but she's a, she's a lap dog. She would be great for most anybody. of the time. Yeah, anybody really. I mean, most of the time when you get when you get fosters, they come from somewhere. Uh, her family had a rough time in Kansas City, and they just moved. They had to move back to Florida, and they just couldn't take her with them. And so they left her here with Positive Tails, which is a local rescue. And normally, when dogs come in, they they're nervous. They don't know where they're at. They take some time to get adjusted or whatever. But she just kind of. She's been taking naps and oh, she's been here 24 hours. Yeah, and you and put she's she's playing with the dogs and um, don't like being held apparently. <laughs> but aside from that, no, she actually uh, she cuddled up to me on the on the ride back last night when we went to get her, and then she just kind of hung out in her. Uh, Wherever you put a blanket, that's where she goes. Yeah, you put a blanket down, and that's where she goes. She's. A lap dog. She actually came. The family she had had a bunch of little kids, and they had some other animals. She doesn't care about hamsters or gerbils or guinea pigs or, cats. or anything or cats or anything. She's just kind of the most low key, easy going dog. That uh, I don't know. She she'll play with the dog, but she'll. I mean, when she goes for nap time, she goes for epic nap time. She'll come up and snuggle to you. She's already turning over and letting us scratch her tummy, which that's a big thing for dogs and trust. So, yeah, she's she's a she's a pretty nice dog. So if you're in the Topeka or not Topeka, if you're in the Kansas City area, and uh, you're interested in in a rescue, I think she's she's probably about five or six. The, the family had her yes. for four years, but they didn't know how old she was before that. She seems kind of like she's five or six. We don't exactly know what she is. She's got kind of a boxer face to her. She's like 30, 35 pounds. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, she's she's really cool so far. Most of the time, we gotta, you know, put a. She loves kisses. Oh yeah, she loves kisses, and she's she's got her tail up. She's wagging. She'll wander all over the place. She's just she's just a really easygoing, super low maintenance dog. And so if you have little kids, she's gonna be fine with them. If you know an older couple that just wants a dog to hang out, she'll be a lap dog. She'll take naps. She'll just kind of hang out. She's it's, like I said, just super super low maintenance. Mm -hmm. So. Anyhow, I'm back to talking about bowling balls, and then we'll wrap this up. <laughs> I do not play bowling by Jason Belmonte because I haven't found a bowling game on either mobile or anything else that's actually worth anything. A lot of people have talked about it and said it's really good, so I might check it out. I'm kind of into Raid Shadow Legends right now. Kind of? Yeah, I, said, yeah, I was, I was going to clarify. <laughs> I actually started... You're yeah, the I wife started, is in the room. I started a new account. So. <laughs> Raid Shadow Legends is really fun. Kind of like a little RPG type thing where you go through the little levels and you build your characters and you get, you know, new shields and armor and whatever else. And you digress. Yeah. Anywho. Mm -hmm. Did you get on to that question? Um, probably not. This chat always pops around. Yeah, yeah, I got the, I got a second one. The urethane? You got that one? I don't think there was a urethane question. It, what? It was, it was in the one, so. I must have missed the urethane. I've seen some stuff talking about urethane. Would you, okay, would you rather wear a Texas Longhorn yeah. shirt and bowl with only the fever pitch or wear a Missouri Tiger shirt and bowl with only the hot cell? Yeah. Um, I don't, the, 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 the college things don't really get me. The, the fever pitch of the, the urethane period, so, yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather bowl with the fever pitch, though. The hot cell rolled pretty good, but the fever pitch is decidedly more me, so. Uh, let's see. Scroll, 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 scroll. Uh, and then all of a sudden, pop on me. I think she wants to. Yeah, the fire was out for just over a year and Sonic about 16 months. Just Yeah, I just don't think they sold well. I don't know why, because the Sonic was, everybody was after the Sonic because they heard it was a, we'd gone for a while without having any kind of new IQ, and then they heard it was based off the IQ, 
the Sonic's a different animal. It's really, really rolly and chuggy and crazy and, and whatever else. So, I um, mean, since fire, I don't know why because it's. I mean, it was a, it was a, I've got two of them. They're they're great balls. I just they look sharp and they have that have that fancy new color thing. They have all that mica in there and then everything like that. And I just I don't understand. But. Thoughts on the tropical surge? Haven't yeah. Specs on the yeah tops. Uh, specs on the tropical surge look like the ride. That's what I was saying. If you get a hybrid tropical surge, that's going to be one of the best like true light oil um, low hooking balls out there. Highly highly recommend any of the tropical surges now that they they retooled that core a little bit. That's actually going to be a great option on on drier lanes. So seriously seriously. Spec cover I yeah, that would, that would be it. All right. Well, it is 935 in my neck of the woods. And let me see. Tomorrow is Saturday. Okay, so, yeah, we got we got more garage sale tomorrow. It's really weird because my wife has been home today. So she thought today was Saturday. I normally have Fridays off because I work for tens. But I also thought today was Saturday because she, because she was home. And so I'm thinking, okay, well, if it's Saturday, tomorrow is uh, Tomorrow is lane certification, which it's not. It's Saturday. So. Ah, True Blue. I have two dogs, one rescue. I love her name. Love her name's Bree, and I have Chops. Got him as a pup. Yeah, we had uh, Yuna, which is the Panda Bear and Panda Bear Productions. We had her. She was ten weeks old, so she was she was really little when we got her. And then we've got two rescues. So Mistletoe, which is the star of my uh, intense parody. Actually, the day we got her, that picture's on your thing. When you pop up the Panda Bear Productions, the little room with the little puppy. Oh, that's yeah, yeah. the first yeah, day we got yeah, her. Yeah, the first day that we got her, that picture on the far right of the Panda Bear Productions, that's the day that we got her. She was tiny. Uh, so, yeah. So, yeah, and rescue dogs are fun. Like I said, um, Roxy is a foster, so we're just, we're just taking care of her, but she will be adopted out. She's not our dog, so... Uh, we're not going to keep her. But, yeah, super low maintenance dog if you're looking for somebody that can just go anywhere and do anything. So they actually don't have to be Topeka, Kansas Oh, yeah, so, yeah, if you're, not, if you're not necessarily around the area, I mean, if you're, like, from St. Louis or something, we'll, we'll transport her. Yeah, if you're looking for a main... No, they'll even chain it. They'll daisy chain it anywhere in the U.S. from what I know. Oh, okay. So, yeah, if you're interested in, uh, if you're interested in a dog, Roxy's heckin' awesome. I mean, you have to, obviously... Can't take hard work for it. You have to go through the whole thing. Because um, they've asked me a couple times to. They were trying to get one from California to here. So yeah. They transport. Yeah, Steve and, and James. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, with stuff coming out so quickly. Yeah, it's hard to imagine stuff lasting any longer than a year, year and a half. So that's why that's what makes stuff like the Black Widows that continue to come out. They should never end that. Honestly, they should never end that line. Phase two, Venom Shock, all that stuff should just stick around. There's no reason. There's no. There's just no reason to, to let go of them, other than specifically other than being a hipster. Instead of just saying, "Well, I'm just it's been out for so long and it's just ridiculous. I'm just not throwing the hybrid." Well, that's done. Why can't it? Why can't it be out there forever? It's just like somebody saying, "Okay, well, you know, we've we've had." We've had chicken fried steaks around so long, or we've had hamburgers around so long, it's time to just get rid of those and go do something else. That's stupid. So, all right. So, looks like we're to the end of the, the questions and stuff, and so I'm going to go ahead and cut it off here. I'm going to go for about two hours here, so. Um, we're going to go ahead and cut it off, call it night. I do have more videos coming. I do have our... Ozarks recap. I did a vlog. I have to put that together. Um, I have to put that together, and then I have about my my jersey designs. Um, I'll put all the information about those up. But. Uh, yeah, thanks, James, for. 
managing my stream while I was rambling at Nick. That's probably going to happen a lot more because I'm I'm hopefully going to have you know Brad Miller. And, you should probably get this okay by James. Yeah, I think it's just going to happen. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll make it up. I'll make it up to him later. <laughs> He's going to have like a case of stuff waiting on him here when he comes for his, <laughs> for his trip. Um, New bags, like 10 shirts. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. James is going to have a care package when he shows up. But uh, Brad and Brad and Kyle, you know, they do so much interviewing everybody else. Hopefully I can have Brad on for an interview and talk to him a little bit. And maybe some of the other pros. I need to start talking to uh, Schlemmer. So when Roto Grip stuff comes out, like, like Chad, and, Chad and Justin... Hopefully they can. Hope we we can make this a regular thing when when bowling balls come out that they can get on and, and talk about them. And hopefully I can achieve the same thing with Schlemmer, and then maybe I can get some. Uh, Carol, Carolyn Dora Ballard is actually my <laughs> turbo rep, so hopefully I can. It's James, you got yeah. uh, So maybe I can maybe I can get her on and talk to her a little bit. Uh, Leanne Holsenberg, who works for Storm, I talked to her a little bit, which is still crazy to think about. I, I feel like any time I'm talking to the people and I'm bugging them or just wanting to talk to them because it's Leanne Holsenberg and Carolyn Dora Ballard. But truth be told, I mean, uh, Leanne works for Storm and Carolyn is my regional turbo rep. So, I mean, I gotta talk to them anyway. But it just, it's weird. So, I don't know. I'll work into it. So, yeah, it's all shiny and swirly. So, anyway, all right. Thanks a bunch, everybody. Uh, thanks, Aaron. Thanks, James, especially for I don't know why you run my streams for me and still don't. So that makes no sense. But I mean, I don't know if it's like that or so. All right. Yes, uh, Preppy. Uh, the the Skype or video conferences, interviews. That's what I got the TV for. Actually, I just haven't worked it out yet. So yes, that's actually that's actually going to happen. Um, so instead of, I do have an HDMI splitter, which I had thought of doing, but I think that having me and whoever I'm interviewing in the same picture the whole time, I think would be really cool. So that's, that's why I was really happy when I got the TV. So that we're actually, actually working on that. That's actually a thing. So I'm glad that, uh, you, you know, think, sure. yes. Um, yeah, so that's, I'm, I'm glad that that's what, that will work or people will like that. So, all right, I'm out. Thanks everybody. Go watch if you missed the videos. Go watch them now. They're all live and everything's cool. So, uh, Tamber's also got his videos up. Casey Murphy has his videos up. I don't think that um, it'll be another couple days before the bowling fix gets theirs up. I think we're trying to get them on the video team as well. But uh, Tamber's are up. Uh, Casey Murphy's are up. Josh Tajiri should be up before too long if they're not already. Right. So, um, yeah, some good stuff. Also, also, also. Carrie Bruner and Cassie Williamson Shoemate have have started putting videos up too, and so they're on the uh, the female lower rev spectrum of the world. And so if uh, if that more fits your game, go definitely check them out. They both do really well, and they just recently started making videos. So uh, Carrie Bruner, Cassie Williamson Shoemate be a couple of good ones to check out too and then i still need to make angels videos she just got her iq tour emerald emerald drilled tonight so we need to get uh, angel videos too so those are coming and then possibly an opinion video and then i have too much stuff to work on i don't want to think about it right now so we're just gonna <laughs> we're just gonna go bye bye because this was a long enough week anyway so uh thanks everybody we'll see you later hope you enjoyed the videos Hope you like the, the balls when they come out, June 21st. So we still got three more weeks, uh, but uh, they're going to go away. So thanks so much, everybody.